politician shot to pieces, wouldn't blame people for giving um, politicians a good kicking. Um, clearly, the, uh, the political uh, element of this now is to reflect on public anger, as indeed the Speaker takes to uh, his feet. On members' allowances, we all know that it is the tradition of this House that the Speaker speaks to the whole House. But in doing so, please allow me to say to the men and women of the United Kingdom that we have let you down very badly indeed. We must all accept blame. And to that extent I have, that I have contributed to the situation, I, profound, I am profoundly sorry. Now each and every member, including myself, must work hard to regain your trust. As a matter of urgency, and within 48 hours, I am calling the Prime Minister and party leaders, including the minority parties, to meet with me and other members of the House of Commons Commission. Also present will be the right honourable member for Esluan. Leaders of all parties have made announcements on what should be done. Some of their proposals are very similar to those put to the House on 3rd of July last year by the Members' Estimates Committee, which I chair, and copies of which are lodged in the Vote Office. I want discussion to centre on the additional cost allowance and all those matters that have caused the greatest controversy and most anger with the public. I am including that early publication of the additional cost allowance, office costs and travel material. While we await the work of the Committee on Standards and Public Life, we must search for agreement so that the Leader of the House can bring forward resolutions to give an opportunity for the House to deal with the immediate situation. In the meantime, I do urge all honourable members not to submit claims for approval. Last week, I had a most productive meeting with Sir Christopher Kelly, who explained to me his hopes to bring reasoned proposals in the autumn. While we await the outcome of his work, it is imperative that we continue to improve our accounts and practice in the interim and get in place measures that work and are seen to be working. And I say again, we all bear a heavy responsibility for the terrible damage to the reputation of this House. We must do everything we possibly can to regain the trust and confidence of the people. Order. A point of order, Mr Prentice. A motion of no confidence in you, sir, will appear on the order paper tomorrow. Am I right in thinking it will be debated tomorrow and voted upon? No, order. This is not a point of order. Uh, uh, order. Please allow me to answer. Please allow me to answer. These are matters for debate on an appropriate motion. Mr. Caswell. On a point of order, as you'll be aware, members on all sides have now tabled a substantive motion calling for a vote of no confidence in you. When will members be allowed to choose a new Speaker with the moral authority to clean up Westminster and the legitimacy to lift this House out of the mire? Uh, 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 I know that the Honourable Member has taken... Uh, I'll answer. I know the Honourable Gentleman has taken advice. It's not a substantive motion. It's an early day motion. I, I, well, the Honourable Gentleman is telling me it's not. Please give me the credit for having some uh, experience in the Chair. It's not a substantive motion. It is an early day motion. And the Honourable Gentleman knows... Yes, uh, point of order, Mr. Order. Uh, order. Uh, order. Uh, order. Uh, order. Uh, order. Well, let me ask the clerk, because I'm wrong, I'll say so. Uh, the clerk. 
it's a motion on the remaining ordinance. It's a motion on the remaining ordinance. Uh, but, but, pardon? It can only be preceded with it's a substantive motion. Uh, it's a remaining order on the, uh, the remaining orders. It can only be preceded with if it becomes a substantive motion. The uh, order, the honourable gentleman. So there is, as you say, great public anger outside, which undoubtedly has harmed the reputation of this House. We all bear responsibility. I take my share of responsibility like any other honourable member. But can I put this to you, and I'm not associated with the motion, sir. Would you bear in mind that it would be very useful for the reputation of this House, and I say this with reluctance, but I say it all the same, that if you gave some indication of your own intention to retire, your early retirement, sir, would help the reputation of the House. The, the Honourable Member has served under more speakers than I have, and he knows that that's not a subject for today. The Honourable Gentleman have a point of a... Mr Speaker. Uh, 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 did the Honourable Gentleman have a point of order? I may, Mr Speaker, on a point of order. I have a great deal of personal sympathy for the impossible situation that you find yourself in. But I have to say, the statement you have made, sir, uh, had it been made a few weeks or months ago, would have been extremely welcome. But I have very grave doubts, given the appalling situation we find ourselves in, this midden of the House's own making, that any, any action taken by members of this House will actually restore the trust that we need. And therefore, is it not necessary, and can you assist us in this, uh, Mr Speaker, is it not necessary for this House to resolve to accept unequivocally the results of Sir Christopher Kelly's uh, yeah, decisions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is it not necessary? I must stop. I must stop the honourable member. I cannot give an assurance as to what any organisation, uh, uh, the proposals of any organisation, will be accepted by this house. This house must make it th that exception. But order, let, let me. Find, I think. I think I must clarify <coughs> a certain situation. That, and I said it in the statement, Sir Christopher Kelly will not report until the autumn and therefore steps have to be taken within this house. Now, did they have another point of order? I don't want to... Further to that point of order, uh, Mr Speaker, what I was asking was that the House be given a, an opportunity to resolve to accept the recommendations of that independent committee, to resolve to remove the remaining barriers to transparency so that uh, everything can be revealed as soon as possible, and also to accept that those honourable and right honourable members who put us into this position by resisting reform cannot possibly be the right people to lead us out of the market. Well, I say to the honourable gentleman, until resolutions are put forward, and I hope that they, are, they come forward for the meeting that I propose, then only, and that the Leader of the House will have that responsibility, that only then uh, can the House proceed. And also I say that you mentioned transparency. Yes, as I've stated, I've heard leaders of the party and others talk about many issues, some of which were brought up on the 3rd of July by the committee which I chair. And what I can say on that one is that anything about transparency can be on the agenda at the meeting within 48 hours and hopefully can be translated into a resolution with this house, which this House can consider. A point of order, sir. Mr Speaker, the, the times that we are living in are unprecedented as far as Parliament is concerned. What is at stake is the institution of Parliament and its integrity. And, Mr Speaker, could I just say that I very much hope you will take account of the fact that there is profound concern voiced in this motion that is to go down tomorrow. Could I ask you, sir, to bear in mind that the condition of the House today is rather like the condition of the country at the time of the Norway debate? And could you reflect on that? Uh, uh, a point of order, sir.